Hello everyone, Cat Goblin or Merton here, and in this review, I'm going to be reviewing all the locations and rooms in Skibby Doo Night of 100 Frights. This is going to be part one of the review, and in this part, I'll be talking about Mystic Manor and the Hedge Maze, as well as each room slash area. I'll try not to make it long, but without further ado, let's get into the review. Some key things to note is that I won't be talking about the locations of the monster tokens because I already reviewed them in my inventions slash items review. Obviously, certain locations are parts of warp gates, a tiny mystery machine to save your progress, and snack gates. If you don't know what snack gates are, well, it's a machine that requires a fee before you can enter the next area. Our first location is the mystery machine. Now, this area is pretty much your central hub that branches off with different paths to each location, and of course, each room slash area has Scooby Snacks scattered all around. Here at the mystery machine, there is the front entrance to Mystic Manor with a snack gate in front of it. Smuggler's Cove is to your right, while the Hedge Maze is to your left, and you will need keys to unlock them, which you can get with a shovel and a double jump springs. There is a path that leads you to the Mystic Playground, and on the side of Mystic Manor, there is the entrance to the Monster Gallery. Also, there is a fountain, the hole that Shaggy fell in, obviously the Mystery Machine, and the Groundskeeper hangs around the front of Mystic Manor when you get the shovel and when you beat the game. Next to location is Mystic Playground, and it features a slide, tire swings, trampoline, sandbox, seesaw, some platforms, a tire swing attached to a propeller, and an ice rink. This area is pretty much a room full of free Scooby Snacks. The Gargoyles Monster Token is also here, and the Groundskeeper is also chilling near the entrance. Our next location is the Monster Gallery. In this room, you can use your monster tokens to view all 21 monsters down the long hallway. There's also a machine near the entrance where you can view concept art and cutscenes. The first major location is Mystic Manor. The monsters that you encounter here are the Headless Specter, the Creeper, Werewolf, the Ghost of Geronimo, Witch, lots of ghosts, zombies, the Witch Doctor, two gargoyles, a tar monster, three cavemen, spiders, rats, bats, and the Black Knight at the end. Our first area here is Clamor in the Manor Parts 1 to 4. The first room is pretty basic. You make it to the second floor, grab the key, and the door to the hallway will open with a lot of bats flying out. There's also a gap that you can jump over to reach the third floor with two headless specters. And in the hallway, there's a secret passage behind a bookshelf that you can access with the football helmet. Now, I already talked about Clamor in the Manor Part 2 in another video, but when you first enter here, the creeper does not pop out of his moving picture until you acquire the football helmet. The middle fireplace leads you to a secret back room, while the fireplace to the right leads you to the other room quicker. Right! Headless Spectre! <laughs> <laughs> Part 3 is a large dining room with lots of gaps. There is a fireplace that shoots at fire, a large gap that you can walk around, and lots of patrolling werewolves and headless specters. Part 4 is the kitchen. As soon as you enter this room, there will be a key on top of a burning stove, and a pressure plate to the far right. Once you step on the pressure plate, the sprinklers will go off for a few seconds. The floor will be slippery, and you can grab the key off the stove. The third oven contains a secret back room with a door which I'll talk about in the next review, but the main door that you unlocked will take you to a hallway. The ghost of Geronimo will pop out of a secret passage that can lead you to the warp gate, and the exit is at the very end of the hallway. Next area is Mind Your Manners Parts 1-3. In part 1, you'll be in a tower part, and there will be a witch, a giant fan, and some smoke. You have to make your way up the broken stairs by jumping over gaps and avoiding ghosts. Once you're at the top, there will be a hallway. To your right here, there is a small room with a pressure button, and when you use the football helmet on the button, the giant fan will activate, clearing the smoke and killing the witch. A werewolf will surprise you near the exit, and if you use the umbrella on the giant fan, you'll be taken to Cower in the Tower Part 1. When you enter part 2, you'll be greeted by the creeper who is guarding a locked door. Shaggy will briefly appear, and you have to collect 4 keys while sliding on the floor and avoiding the creeper. <laughs> Once you unlock the door, you hop onto a floating table which will bring you to a secret passage that leads to a landing with two headless specters. 
and then you hop onto another table that takes you to a long hallway. After when you defeat the monsters in the hallway, you just have to get past this self-opening door. You'll end up on the top landing, take the stairs to the left, and you'll reach a small room with the exit door. In part 3, you're in a small room, but as soon as you leave, a bookshelf slides in, preventing you from turning back. At this point, all is lost, and the mastermind has won, but you can just go down the hallway to reach the next part. After passing through some ghosts and jumping on flying carpets, you'll reach a room with a huge hole in the floor, but luckily you can take a ride on this moving chandelier. Eventually, you'll be in a hallway with two werewolves. Hop on the pressure plate button at the end of the hall, and two bookshelves will move, revealing the starting room and some stairs. Take the stairs down, and the next area will be through that door. Next area is All Scares Upstairs, Parts 1 to 4. In Part 1, there's a lot of chaos. You have a bat flying all over the place, a headless specter patrolling the top floor, another headless specter that is stuck on a platform, and flaming chandeliers that rise up and down over pits. If you go to the left hallway, you'll find a blind zombie, some stairs going down, and the groundskeeper next to a door. If you enter that door, you will be sent to the top floor in Glamour in the Manor Part 1. Now if you take the right hallway, you'll have to get past a zombie, lots of headless specters, a few witch doctors, and a few more gaps. Once you get past those, you'll reach Part 2. Part 2 is a library with many secrets. If you try to climb the stairs, the stairs will fold, making you slide down. If you pull on the curtain rope to your left, a part of the bookshelf will turn, with the headless specter walking out and revealing another room. Once inside this room, you can pull on another curtain rope where another bookshelf will turn, revealing the creeper with the exit door. If you have the suction cups, you can make your way up the trick stairs to a hallway. Bash the railing in the middle part with the vocal helmet, swing on some chandeliers, and you'll reach a secret room. You can also climb on the bookshelf in the middle room to reach the secret area. Hey, a monster token! <laughs> It's a headless specter! In part 3, you start off in a hallway with the creeper. After when you defeat the zombie here, you'll come to a juncture. The left hallway is a quicker route to the next room, or you can take the stairs to another hallway with a ghost and more scooby snacks. When you get to this part, bash through the webs and defeat two bats chasing Shaggy. Then you have to let Shaggy throw you onto a trampoline, reach the top floor, use the helmet on this pressure button here, let Shaggy stand on this pressure plate, and you'll clear part 3. In part 4, you'll be greeted by the creeper once more, and he ends up falling through the loose floorboard. There are bats flying around the chandeliers up top, as well as a zombie patrolling on a random loose floorboard. And yeah, that floorboard is pretty much defying gravity, but you can get rid of those bats by opening the chests with a football helmet on the bottom floor. The main part here is to jump on this bed and swing off some chandeliers. When you get here, beat up a bunch of witches and headless specters down this hallway, and you'll reach the next area. Now we have made it to the balconies part, and our only area here is Don't Look Down Scooby-Doo Parts 1 to 2. In Part 1, you are on the balcony. If you go left, you can collect more Scooby Snacks, as well as encounter the gargoyle. There's a few jumps you have to do here and there, but if you make it to this bottom balcony, you'll meet the creeper yet again and the second gargoyle. Ignore the gargoyle, swing off these two lanterns, and you'll reach the balcony with the exit door. There is also a flying magic carpet that can take you to more Scooby Snacks, and another carpet that can take you back to this balcony. To reach the top balcony with the Black Knight's armor, defeat the second gargoyle and his pedestal will fly up to the balcony. Also, there is a creeper on that balcony. In part 2, you are in a long hallway with a bunch of cobwebs to bash through. If you take the first left entrance, you'll realize that you have to collect keys, and there is a back room with three witch doctors. Beat up the witch doctors. <laughs> Collect the last two keys, defeat the creeper again, and you'll claim victory over this room. The balconies part is pretty short, but we are now in the final area of Mystic Manor, which is the rooftops, and our first and only area is Cower in the Tower Part 1. In this tower room, you encounter the tar monster for the first time, and there is a pressure button here that activates this fan. You have to make your way up to each landing while avoiding a few monsters and hazards. After getting past that flaming chandelier, you'll reach the exit door. If you go to the right of the exit door, there is a landing with tar on it. Luckily with the galoshes, you can jump over that gap and reach the top floor. 
The top floor contains a headless specter, the warp gate, a closet with bats, and some boxes. Next area is Panic in the Attic Parts 1-3. to In Part 1, when you go down this hallway, there will be a long slope, some gaps, and a room that you can jump into. If you go all the way down the slope, there's a short hallway and three sets of stairs guarded by two witch doctors. The sets of stairs will lead you back to the top, and if you jump into the room while sliding on the slope, you'll reach the exit door. In Part 2, you climb up this short set of stairs, defeat a witch doctor, and walk through this hallway. There are picture frames that fall when you're close, and you have to collect three keys. At this part here, defeat the sleeping witch, hop on this flying magic carpet, and walk across the beam to get the second key. Pass through this clutter, defeat the second sleeping witch, and you'll reach this next hallway. Go through the loose floorboards, defeat two magic dwellers, grab the final key, and you'll clear this room. In part 3, you start off in this hallway with a loose floorboard and headless specter. You'll soon reach this large area here, and two cavemen will emerge from the two big and obvious boxes. Defeat the cavemen, and if you want more Scooby Snacks, you can go to this area here with the headless specter, and hop on this carpet to jump on some beams. When you're on top of these boxes, jump over two gaps while avoiding this flaming chandelier and reach this part here with a patrolling headless specter. Beat up the witch doctor in this hallway. Run. Fight the last caveman. Hop on this carpet to cross more beams for Scooby Snacks. Climb a set of stairs while avoiding these wild barrels and you'll never have to see the attic again. The last area in Mystic Manor is a dark and stormy night, parts 1 to 3. In part 1, you start off in a courtyard with two creepers. Defeat the creepers, use the football helmet on this pressure button to your left, which lowers a part of the fence, avoid this cloud that strikes lightning, and jump into the fenced area. At this next part, make sure to not jump on the flaming chimneys, and time your jumps carefully. When you get to here, you can see that the doors are closed. Hop on this carpet, press another pressure button, and the doors will open, leading you to the next room. In part 2, you're in another courtyard. Beat up Geronimo, get Shaggy to throw you onto this ledge, stand on this pressure plate, and a witch will drop Shaggy into a chimney. Make your way to the chimneys, Shaggy will help you collect 4 keys and more Scooby Snacks, and this room will easily be completed. For part 3, you walk down this tar slope and encounter the mastermind who spawns in the Black Knight. I will talk more about this room in a future video, but if you enter this door here, you will be sent to the top of Cower in the Tower part 1. The last major area that I'll be looking at is the Hedge Maze. Monsters that you encounter here are the Werewolf, Zombie, Witch, Scarecrow, Spiders, Toxic Plants, Bats, and Rats. The first area here is On Edge in the Hedge, Parts 1-4. to In Part 1, you go through here, squash two spiders, jump over this gap, and hop on these two moving tables. Two werewolves will try to ambush you, there's a witch on top of that hill, then at this part, you avoid the zombie, jump over a few gaps, avoid another werewolf, and the exit gate is right there. In part 2, take the path to your left. Avoid the cauldron, werewolf, and zombie, and then hop onto the floating table. Walk down this hill, jump over a gap, and you'll meet the groundskeeper. As you progress, run past the zombie, jump the gap, avoid the toxic breath from the three plants, jump over two more gaps while dodging two werewolves, and the exit gate is right up there. Near the beginning part, there is a slope and a gap that you can glide over to reach a secret path. Another secret path can be found at this part where you climb up this slope, and both of these paths contain lots of Scooby Snacks. In part 3, you walk along a path, dodge three statues that shoot arrows, and this one scarecrow. There is also a hill that contains two cauldrons, a zombie, and an entrance to another area which I'll talk about soon. Do some parkour jumps here, walk on this tar, avoid two more scarecrows, and you'll find the next exit gate. In part 4, you'll be greeted by Shaggy, who is driving a lawnmower, and once you hop on, he'll take you across the huge thorny area. At some point, you'll have to jump onto unstable platforms and the seesaw when Shaggy goes through these tunnels. You'll have to jump over a few obstacles, cross this bridge, and make it past these two evil statues. Shaggy will say his goodbyes, and you have now reached the greenhouse. The next area is It's a Mean Greenhouse Scooby Parts 1 to 2. In Part 1, you'll walk through this area and defeat three rats. Take the stairs up, avoid the cauldron, scarecrow, and falling because there is a witch patrolling at the bottom. Once here, you'll dodge a firing squad of statues, some toxic plants, and zombies. After when you have passed them, grab onto this chain which activates some seesaw platforms to move so that you can get past the thorns. And here, make your way down while avoiding more toxic plants, Past this zombie, and you'll make it to part 2. 
At this part here, if you bash through those boxes, you'll find a secret path with a witch, more Scooby Snacks, and some moving columns. In part 2, you walk through here, hop on a rat, avoid the zombie, and jump over the gap. <laughs> then you'll have to hop on some floating tables until you reach this part. Avoid the cauldron, and then the rest of the part is all parkour jumps while avoiding a rat, zombie, and two scarecrows. Next area is Chills and Spills on Haunted Hill, parts 1 to 3. In part 1, you will be greeted by a passive werewolf. If you continue to go straight, there is a zombie on a hill, and two scarecrows will drop down from the trees. You'll want to take the right path where you have to jump over gaps and avoid swinging tree branches. At this part here, there will be thorn bushes, some cauldrons, and two werewolves will try to ambush you, but you can just jump over them. Continue going down this path, avoid more tree branches and the spider, and you'll reach the next exit gate. Also at this hill part, you can trap the zombie in a bubble and hop onto the tree, but I also find that you can get to the trees by jumping on this arrow sign, and the trees here contain lots of Scooby Snacks. In part 2, after when you take a few steps forward, two zombies will try to jump you, but you can easily outrun them with supersonic speed. Here, you can avoid some statues and another zombie. Hop on a bunch of floating tables and you'll reach the exit. You can also use the scarecrow at the end to reach a series of unstable platforms that contain lots of Scooby Snacks. Part 3 is where Weathertop, I mean Haunted Hill, resides. At this first part here, dodge a toxic plant and zombie. Then before you climb up the hill, you'll have to dodge a statue, spider, and bat. As you make your way to the top, get past these platforms, jump over a gap, dodge rolling boulders, avoid scarecrows, jump over more gaps, and hop on these floating tables. Once you're at the top, you will of course find the football helmet, and if you enter this cave here next to the floating tables, then you will be sent back to On Edge in the Hedge Part 1. Now to reach the next area, you take a left here near the beginning, knock out the witch, make your way down, grand pan on this pressure plate, and you have reached the next big area. The second area on this map are the sea cliffs. Monsters that you would encounter here are the caveman, ghost diver, sea creature, tar monster, gargoyle, flying fish, and lots of crabs. Our first area here is Scared Stiff at Skull Cliff Parts 1-4. to In Part 1, make it past the caveman, jump over here, and press this button which activates the pulley system, making some lifts move. After taking the lift, defeat the second caveman, go down here, knock out some ghost divers, and press another button which activates the lift near the exit. Make your way back near the beginning, walk down here, take the lift, and there's the exit. Part 2 is very chaotic. You have to jump on unstable platforms, dodge falling rocks, cross this dangerous bridge, fight a sea creature, and dodge the same hazards again. Before you reach the exit gate, you have to get past another tough sea creature. <laughs> In part 3, you have to get past two crabs, a caveman, cross this unstable platform, defeat the ghost diver, and jump on these trampolines. Eventually, you'll ride some lifts, and the exit gate is right there next to the ghost diver. Also, if you press the button down here and the one up on this part, then you'll activate another lift which takes you to this part where you'll find a sea creature eating some Scooby Snacks. In part 4, you take this lift up, defeat the ghost diver, take another lift, and avoid falling rocks. There is also an alternate route where you can glide over to here, press this button, and take another lift. Now, as you continue, walk across moving seesaw platforms, beat up this tar monster, and jump onto more seesaw platforms. Once here, jump onto this very safe seesaw platform. If you go left, you'll jump onto two trampolines, surprise the tar monster, and you can use the umbrella to get to a part with more Scooby Snacks. Now, as you continue, take a lift, defeat two ocean dwellers, and enter Skull Cave. Once in here, jump across some tilting rowboats and you'll reach the next area. You can also ground pound on this pressure plate to drain some of the cave to collect some more Scooby Snacks. Next area is Misbehaving Cause the Cave in Parts 1-3. to In Part 1, the exit gate is at the end of a slope and has four locks. You're going to have to slide on the ice, turn those sea creatures into seafood, collect all the keys, <laughs> and walk up the slope. Also, if you walk up on this path here and fight all the gargoyles, then you'll reach a shortcut entrance that takes you back to the top of the hill and on edge in the hedge, part 3. In part 2, you're going to have to get to over there, but it's way too far and there's a huge icicle block in your way, so you'll have to climb up here. There's this little section here where you can get more Scooby Snacks and you can ground pound on this pressure plate to get back, 
But besides that, use the football helmet on three icicles, which knocks them down so you can hop on them. Fight the caveman, get back down there, do some parkour jumps, get past the ghost diver, and you'll reach the next part. In part 3, you have to make your way to the top of the cave, but right now that's kind of impossible. Hop across these big rocks, defeat the super tough sea creature, <laughs> grand pound on this pressure plate, and the water level in the cave will rise. At this point, you have to do some parkour jumps on rowboats that automatically sink when you stand on them, and cliffs while the water level is rising behind you. Get past two ghost divers, wait on the sturdy rowboat for about a minute, walk up this cave ramp with a ghost diver, and jump on more sinking rowboats. You can find the sonic enhancement here, if you continue right you'll find a sea creature in a box with lots of scooby snacks, but over here you'll find another ghost diver who is patrolling in front of the exit gate, and then you have cleared the sea cliffs area. Our final area on this map is the graveyard, and I wonder what kind of monsters you would find in a graveyard. Oh let's see, zombies, undead werewolves, spiders, ghosts, toxic plants, witches, gargoyles, tar monsters, and the green ghost at the end. Our first area in the graveyard is a tight space for a grave plot, parts 1 to 2. In part 1, you'll be required to collect 3 keys that hop in and out of these holes on the path, and there are ghosts that patrol in and out of the mausoleum. Once you get all 3 keys, you make it to the next part, but be careful because there is a zombie that will try to ambush you. Also, there are Scooby Snacks on top of the mausoleum, and this is the only area where you can't take the entrance back, meaning you can't go back to misbehaving cause a cave in part 3. In part 2, you have to unlock the exit door by pushing all 4 pressure plates, which is impossible because they all need to be weighed down. You can hop on these moving blocks to reach this tower where you can knock down an urn to weigh the pressure plate. Knock down 2 more urns with the football helmet. <laughs> Swing on this chain to knock the last one and the door will open. But before you leave, make sure to greet the gargoyle hiding in that urn over there. Next area is a one way trip to the crypt, parts 1 to 4. In part 1, you'll find yourself in a large room and there's a huge pit beside you. Defeat two werewolves and a spider. This middle door here leads to part 2 and the door on the right leads to part 3. To explore further, you can pull on this chain here which opens the coffin with a ghost and button. Press the button, the ghost will fall through the floor, and those blocks over there will move so you can reach the next floor. On the second floor, there's another door, but if you continue going right, you'll find a werewolf hiding in an urn, more scooby snacks, and a gargoyle. If you take the first door in part 1, you'll reach part 2. Walk down this corridor, avoid statues and a ghost, and you'll come across this huge pit. There is wind coming out of certain points in the pit, which you can use the umbrella to float on. There's a gargoyle flying around, and this room is pretty much a room to gain more scooby snacks. The third door up here in part 1 takes you to part 4. In this part, you'll walk along the top part of this cliff and defeat three witches. At this bottom part here, you'll find a werewolf and the exit. However, if you go left, you'll be jumping onto coffins, avoiding swinging tree branches, and meeting a zombie with a stick of gum. The second door in part 1 and the exit gate in part 4 will take you to part 3. Here, there's a center mausoleum with doors that contain three zombies, a toxic plant, sandwich, or nothing. But the exit gate is pretty easy to find. Just make sure to pay the big fee at the snack gate and you'll reach the next and last area of the graveyard. The last area in the graveyard is Gloom and Doom down in the tomb, parts 1 to 3. In part 1, you'll be greeted by a werewolf who will emerge from that urn. Once you get past this gate, you're going to have to save Shaggy from four gargoyles. Knock the first two pillars on the two gargoyles with the football helmet. Ground pound on this pressure plate which raises the second swinging pumpkin, dodge the first pumpkin, and knock down the last two pillars. Shaggy will give you a hand by carrying you and tossing you to the key. Watch him get chased by a witch who ends up dying and you can continue down the path to the exit gate. In part 2, you'll climb up this hill and if you continue left, you'll find 4 zombies that pop out of these mausoleums. There are also pressure plates that open some coffins up top revealing boxes of scooby snacks or ghosts. 
But anyways, defeat all the zombies and the exit gate is to your left. Now, if you go right, you can visit these coffins, or you can jump this huge gap, go through this door, which takes you back to a one-way trip to the crypt, part 1, and collect more Scooby Snacks. In part 3, walk down this hill and you'll soon realize you have to collect two keys. The keys can be found at these parts where they're next to an urn containing a ghost. Walk up the hill, defeat six tar monsters, and once you enter the gate, you'll encounter the mastermind for the second time, who spawns in the green ghost. Now, I'll talk more about this part with the green ghost in a future review, but if you jump over this green pit and take the gate, then you'll be sent back to the mystery machine. So everyone, those were all the rooms slash locations in Mystic Manor and the Hedge Maze. Shout out to Outlaws for Life, Games, and Misc who suggested this review. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next part or another review.